as a preamble to hearing our very illustrious team of attorneys, uh, Kevin and Marie Murch, and followed by uh, Rick Jaffe, attorneys who will defend uh, out-of-the-box maverick doctors like you and I, who dare to push the envelope and don't follow the standard <clears throat> line of uh, conventional medicine. Uh, we're very appreciative of their services, and believe me, uh, <clears throat> I can tell you very wholeheartedly that you have to have the right attorney uh, when you are attacked by the feds. They have unlimited resources, and most of it's are my tax money and your tax money. Now, as uh, those of you who were here at my earlier session noted, uh, on no 1 November of 2007, a 12 member federal grand jury found me not guilty in a criminal case in which I faced five years imprisonment and a $250,000 fine. According to the federal judge in Reno who heard the case, he looked at the prosecution on the first day of the trial and said, you have a heavy burden of proof because Dr. Forsyth, through my research, is the only doctor in judicial history that's ever been brought up for a criminal trial for prescribing a drug off-label. And secondly, for using the term... Do you want to shut the door back there, please? Thank you. And the second charge was for using the drug for an unrecognized medical condition, namely anti-aging. <clears throat> that was their case. And I intend now to go through some of the key um, elements of the case to show you how the government works uh, in the unfortunate circumstance that any of you will have to go through what uh, my wife and I and my family, uh, my staff and my patients uh, went through for almost now four years. And we're still not quite clear because it's taking me all this time just to get privileges back. <clears throat> but um, I think you'll find it interesting and uh, hopefully it will help you in the future in, in how you practice medicine. This is some of my background. As you can see, I was trained at the University of California at Berkeley and the med school at UCSF. I practiced in northern Nevada for 35 years, never have had a malpractice suit against me. Certified in homeopathy, board certified in internal medicine, medical oncology, utilization review, quality assurance, and board eligible in pathology and gerontology. And I've been uh, active in the medical school, taught the uh, course on death and dying, uh, taught the pathology course, and also taught uh, oncology. I'm currently a clinical instructor in alternative medicine. Sixty percent of all medical schools now have courses in alternative medicine. And yes, uh, this is the anti-aging meeting, and Dr. Katz is second from the left here. Now, I began using adult human growth hormone replacement therapy uh, way back in 2001, about eight almost eight years ago, as a very limited part of my practice. My practice is integrative oncology. Uh, what I do is, uh, because of my homeopathic uh, uh, underpinnings and my protection from the homeopathic board, I push the envelope and use natural therapies uh, for cancer patients, and I've done a number of outcome-based studies using uh, pawpaw for na from Nature Sunshine, PolyMVA from AMARC, and my current study is salicinium in which I have a 300-patient study uh, that is out now 40 months. <clears throat> and in prostate cancer alone, these are all stage 4 ca cases, I have an 87% response rate uh, in that group. So that's the nature of my practice. The anti-aging part of my practice was very limited. I had less than 25 patients at any one time. And I've been coming here to A4M for a number of years. I've been giving... Uh, classes on alternative cancer therapy. 
uh, I developed a personal protocol for my patients, and uh, my protocol complied with all the A4M regulations, the workup, the lab studies, treatment re recommendations. Now, I was uh, faced with a shill patient who my antenna, I guess, was down, and my nurse, who's usually very clever, did not recognize him either. He said he was from Oakland, California, and that he was referred by a friend from a local gym, and he was interested in uh, human growth hormone replacement therapy. He said his exercise tolerance was poor. He was fatigued. He gave all the signs and symptoms of someone who was HDH depleted. And later in trial, as I said earlier this morning, he had asked his superior what symptoms he should tell me. <coughs> I did not recognize the fact that he was wired, and I did spend uh, almost 50 minutes with him, and that 50-minute uh, time with him was played at the trial, and actually I felt kind of proud of it because I did a pretty good uh, unhurried exam and was quite friendly with him. The uh, events of February of 2005 began, as you saw in the video this morning, with a raid on my home and my office by two dozen, two dozen federal agents. My wife and I were sitting uh, having breakfast on the 16th of February 2005 when she happened to notice in our winding driveway uh, three dark vehicles come up the driveway. She said, Jim, what are those cars doing here? And I said, I don't know, but I'll go and see. So I hurried down the hall. Uh, to the breezeway area in the back door, uh, opened the door and uh, saw uh, a dozen uh, uh, ge gentlemen and ladies both with jackets with the insignia FBI, FDA, and ICE. And like the governor of Illinois, I said, is this a joke? And uh, they pushed me back into the house, put a gun on my head, and the first question was, who else is in your home and do you have guns in your home? And at that time, my wife hurried down the hall. She heard the commotion. A gun was put to her chest. We were <clears throat> separated and, and uh, not allowed to talk to each other. If we went to the bathroom or took a shower, we had uh, accompaniment. Uh, I asked for Miranda rights, and I asked what, the, what was going on here. And uh, my wife asked the same question. They said, uh, you've prescribed HGH off-label. I said, oh, OK. <laughs> So for a moment, I did think that I was in uh, Russia with the KGB or Nazi Germany with, uh, with the Gestapo uh, beating down on us. I, I saw the flag outside. I'm a retired veteran. I was, uh, my wife and I both were veterans. I'm a retired colonel. My wife's a retired major. And um, I was in Vietnam with the Commendation Medal. So never having had any disciplinary action by a hospital board, and never having had a malpractice suit in 40 years of practice, I, I couldn't, couldn't figure it out. I was t totally perplexed. 